All right. Well, hello, everyone. Doug here with the LincolnList.com. Let me welcome you to another edition of Stock Market Mutterings. This is for the 3rd of February, one month down already in the books for 2020. So I kind of hope that your January went really well for you. I hope you got off to the start that you were looking for. I hope you started achieving the goals that you set out for yourself there at the beginning of the year. If you're not and you're kind of just falling behind a little bit or you find yourself in a state of confusion, especially since now we're starting to see a little bit of market, which we're going to talk about here, make sure you visit the LinkedInList.com. Click on the Trade Room tab. You can start trading with us right away. Also, don't forget, you guys out there, I still have the one-month free trial available to the Swing Trading Program. The part-time trader just send me an email. Excuse me. Send me an email, support at the LinkedInList.com. Put in the subject line, part-time trader, and I'll get you set up there for the trial. So as always, let me take a grope in the murkiness here, try to make some sense out of this market, try to help you guys out, see what we can find. Now we saw a change in te a tempo, obviously. It took a, like a global epidemic to get the market to pull back and move out of Groundhog Day, because basically since October here, after the, let's, let's call it the official ending of the trade war, so to speak, which nobody knows what we're doing with that still anyway. The market was just straight up. I mean, you had like one little nugget around Thanksgiving. And then from there on, it was just sort of gap float, gap float. It just, it felt like it was never going to stop. And I, it, it, I did a market mutterings a couple of weeks ago. thought, I just can't see how we're not going to do 30,000. We're so close. We're only a few hundred points away. Well, this thing comes along and that's the market. You never know what's going to happen in the world. It always sounds safe. It always feels safe. And these things can sometimes leave our minds, but it doesn't take much. And here we got this little issue going on here. Maybe it's a little issue. It could turn out to be a big issue. Who knows? But the market didn't hasn't reacted too kindly to this. And you can understand the selling going into the weekend. It's hard to tell as more cases could come out with this coronavirus who knows? The close wasn't very good. You, you kissed the 50 moving average. And I would have to say going forward, you know, I don't know how futures are going to open up on Sundays, but if this thing sticks underneath that 50 moving average, we could see some heavy selling or some more aggressive selling. In fact, the Dow itself closed underneath of the 50 moving average on Friday, I have roughly like 28,300. So it closed like 100 points underneath of that. SPY is still holding that. I don't know where the cues are here, but let's just kind of focus in on the SPY. And that's also the support late December and early January. So that's kind of held here for the short term and provided, you know, a, a base to look at. Now, if this does not hold, then there really isn't anything in its way until you start looking at maybe SPY 312 to 310s. 200 moving average is quite some distance away right now, which is at 300. But, you know, it can happen. We've seen 20, 25% corrections in this market before. I don't think you're going to see that necessarily in this case. Maybe five, eight points or something, percentage points or something. We'll, we'll see. Only time will tell. So a lot of it has to depend on how we open up Monday, which is what, I, you know, the plan that I make. Looking for dip buys, I, I would think the best case scenario here would be more panic that leads into Monday morning. If you can just flush out and shake down and, you know, get this market down towards the 315s maybe, I think that would be great for, for dip buying. If you start gapping up, then it's, it's always difficult to, to determine as to whether or not you want to trust the gap up and, and so on. But I would look for those on some individual names. You know, you've had some really, really strong stocks that had some great patterns to them, like Lulu, number one here, looked really good, like it was ready to break out. Obviously getting hit here, and, you know, who knows how it's going to open up. You've had Apple, which has been relatively strong through all of this. You've got big support, 304s. This is what I would look for right now as a day trader. If you're looking at a swing trader, I, I think you might be able to get some better prices on this. If you're looking at day trading and you're just trying to pick up some alpha throughout the day, that's going to come from the washout. The, the biggest alpha, I think, is going to come from a washout in the morning, burying a lot of these good stocks into support and, and trying to ride the bounce on them. If they gap up the first thing on Monday, that kind of puts you, like I said, in a difficult situation as to whether or not I should trust the gap, and a good portion of that alpha has already been chewed out. So I'm going to go look at these stocks like, you know, Apple here that's been relatively strong, Lulu, 
Another one that I like here that's very strong. So let me just go through each one of these and give you some numbers to work with. I would look for Apple if you could start out the day roughly towards the low 300s. 303, you've got some really good support. And that means opening up and driving right into that number or, or opening up down in that number. Looking for support to hold there in that where it's also the breakout from earlier parts of the year. I think you could get a nice quick bounce. I would look at Lulu here at roughly 231s if you can get 231s on that thing i know some of these prices are a little far off but you just never know what's going to happen and let's see i've got docu here which has held up relatively well i would like to see that at about 76 dollars that one looks pretty good and i also think that NVIDIA looks good, too, if you can get down towards the moving average. I mean, you've got a lot of support right there in this NVIDIA at the two, at the mid-230s, say, where you got like a little double bottom stretching from late last year to early this month, a pivot there just a few days ago on the 27th. I think if you get back down in there, that's a pretty good. Now, these are just trades only until whatever we've got hanging over the cloud here, whatever the market can do. Until it figures itself out. Now, the key about these dip buying is you're just not randomly buying stuff when you're a day trader. If you're an investor, that's a different story. But if you're day trading and you're looking for maximum alpha, like I was saying, and you're trying to get the most range and the most move that you can get out of a stock, it really matters where you buy it or where you short it. These pivot points are important and these, these stocks have to act a certain way and behave a certain way to get there. So when you're looking at Docu, Apple, or Nvidia, or Lulu, maybe none of those even work whatsoever. They they have to kind of set up. I'm just not going to buy a dip in these names just for shits and giggles, you know, just because it's a dip. It has to get down into support. It has to build some sort of a base. It has to show that it's, it's establishing a low volume has to support that low and that's how you determine that you've, you've found an area that favors you risk versus reward it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you every time but it puts you in the best position of success and gives you the most upside potential as I said with gap ups what that does in this kind of a tape is it first puts this thing that you've already maybe some of these stocks have already gapped up one two three dollars you've already given up that much of a move that you're not going to be able to gain that day now the big question is, can I get three or four more on top of this? And you need a setup to go for that. So I think if that's the first move that you get out Monday, it will be kind of disappointing. But who knows? We're going to have to let it play out. Now, if that's the case, you always have to have like a short in mind or a short in your back pocket. And I'd have to think Roku here is, is the one. This thing hasn't done anything but fade since December. I mean, we've gone through some serious bullish market. This was a big time former Momo stock up huge last year. Just cannot. I mean, this thing cannot put together very many days of green, regardless of the market that we had. I mean, it's just consistently faded from 150 down to this one. 20s here where it is 120. I mean, it's just rolling over. So if there's a gap in a run, I would be more inclined to short this name. Now on the flip side of that, you've got some pretty good support that you, you're working on at 117. It's just slightly under the 200-day moving average. And also a little bit of basing and a bottom there from the 7th of November. Keep an eye on those levels. I mean, it could go either way with this one. So I'm looking at... Some better stocks here, the Apples, Docu, Lulu, NVIDIA. I'm looking for some flush panic to begin the day on Monday, shake everyone down, take some of these stocks into really big time support, and look to bounce them from there. On the flip side, if we get a bounce, I don't know necessarily if I would trust it early on. I would probably be more inclined to short things like Roku, maybe even Netflix, and just let the market do what it wants to do. So we're, we'll find out. We'll see how it is. As always, guys, if you need help, feel free to reach out to me, support at the LinkedInList.com. Don't forget about the trial to the... Well, I forgot I was going to say live trade room, but it's not the live trade room. Don't forget about the trial to the part-time trader swing program. Just send me the email there, support at the LinkedInList.com. Put in the heading, part-time trader. Until next week, guys, trade them well. As always, take care. Talk to you then.